Welcome everybody, this is Roy Bandari today at the amazing Bayside Tridel sales office and today we're joined by Jim Ritchie, the Executive Vice President of Tridel to talk about a very, very special new condominium project called Aqualuna Condominium. So Jim, as always, we're, we're really thankful for your time. I know launch time is crazy, so to carve out some time to chat to us, yeah, my we're, we're very, very grateful. So there's a few things we want to talk to you about today. Um, so just to give you a quick overview, uh, we want to talk about Tridel. Tridel have one of the best reputations in the industry and amongst consumers. Uh, and in, a, in today's climate, it's more important than ever. Um, so we want to talk to you about that. We want to take, take a look at the, this neighborhood, which we've talked about for a long time as one of our favorite neighborhoods in Toronto. And we've watched it blossom into really one of the, it's become such a great part of, great community and great part of the city. Uh, and then we want to focus in on the Bay side, which is where Tridel have been very, very focused. Mm -hmm. And then obviously talk about Aqualuna, which is such a stunning project. We saw the renderings this past week and they've really blown us all away. So just to dive right in. So Tridel, um, been around for a number of years, a number of decades. Uh, eight, eight, eight decades. decades yeah. Eight we're, decades. We're in our 84th year. Wow. So again, just to mention what I already said was that in today's climate where the developer is more important than ever before. It's always been one of the most important elements of pre-construction condo buying, but more than ever before, I think it's really come to the fore as, as being an, an important piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. um, give us a little bit of background on Tridel. Give us the Tridel story and what really sets you apart from the, from the other developers. Well, sure, I'm happy to do that. Well, I think, first of all, we'll start off with what we just said. We've, uh, we've got a little bit of experience. Yeah. Uh, we've been around uh, over eight decades, um, originally starting off uh, uh, with single family housing. Uh, but in the 60s, transitioned into apartment building. And then in the late 60s, when uh, this whole realm of condominium mm -hmm. became a, a legal entity of ownership, uh, we were one of the very first uh, you know, to pursue that. In fact, our very first uh, condominium development was in Oakville, of all places. Um, so that's been our focus. Uh, well, since... it's interesting. You, so, sorry to cut you off, Jim, yeah, but sure. it's interesting that you mentioned Oakville. One of the, one of the things that really sets you apart is that you are everywhere in terms of geographical mm -hmm. footprint. You've built in Toronto, you've built in Oakville, you've built in Mississauga, you've built in North York, and you, right. you've really built across the GTA. And right. You, and you well, that's because we believe, you know, there isn't a single condominium market. You know, the condominium market is made up of many sub-markets, and depending on the neighborhood that you're in, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's different product offerings. Um, sure. So whether it's, you know, downtown with very tall buildings with lots of density and lots of small suites, or you're in affluent neighborhoods with very large homes, you know, with a much smaller, more boutique condominium, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, you know, we've been in all those markets, so I think we we have that experience. We know we know the buyer, and because of the number of years that you know we do this specific business, we have a pretty good handle on what works, what doesn't, mm -hmm. and how to best serve a customer. So I really believe experience has a lot to do with our success today but also has to do you know, with our corporate attitude. And really, we want, it may even sound corny today, but we really want to do the right thing. Right. Um, so yes, I think it's, uh, it's smart uh, for a buyer to look carefully at who is going to build their home. Uh, there should be a good track record there. Um, you certainly want to be working with somebody that you know that will actually uh, develop the community and, and finish it in yeah. the manner that it was promised. So, we got a pretty good track record there. In fact, it's for about hundred sure. <laughs> percent. So we've never, so you've built, every, and that's one of the things. Every right? single community yeah. and every single marketplace, um, every decade we've been in business, we have delivered what we said we would do. Understanding marketplace and understanding the different markets is one aspect of it. But I think one of the areas that Tridel have really excelled, and you speak to anybody in the industry, one of the areas that you continue to excel in is customer service when mm -hmm. the condominium is complete and right. handover date. Correct. And that's an, an area that you obviously spend a lot of time and focus and energy on. So it's a very, very important part of the process. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably one of the more demanding areas. Yep. And um, not everybody wants to put the amount of time and money that we do. But we really believe that the customer experience is something that you put at, at the forefront and that in time, that pays dividends For sure. to us as an organization. But if we if we keep our owners very happy, the purchasers, our owners, yeah. and even our friends in the real estate brokerage community who has their clients, it works best for everybody. Um, there's no other way to do it in our mind but to try and to deliver the best possible service. 
Um, there's more and more, we're not the only ones obviously in our industry that believe that, mm -hmm. um, but we think that we've had, you know, a bit of a track record that goes yeah. beyond what most have done or experienced and that uh, we're going to continue to tr raise that bar when it comes to the customer experience. That's right. And I don't mean to, I don't say it to pump your tires or anything, but ob you know, obviously within the industry and within the buyer's minds, you, you already have that reputation and yeah, that's come from that. years and years and years of doing the right thing, as you said. So that's really great. Yeah. I think anybody in this business can make mistakes. For sure. And uh, we had an opportunity to make those mistakes in the 60s and 70s yeah. and whatnot and fine tune. And uh, we think that we've got a, a pretty good, compelling product in today's marketplace. Awesome. So I want to transition and talk now about East Bayfront. Mm -hmm. East Bayfront for myself and my brother and the Talk Condo team has been an area that we've really watched grow and blossom from, you know, it was only, it was only five or six years ago that it was essentially a pile of, pile of dirt. Yeah, and today you walk and some through. warehousing. And yeah, and nothing it's, too attractive. It, and it's it's been amazing to watch it turn into these amazing public spaces with amazing architecture and amazing buildings and amazing residences and commercial buildings and all of these things are starting to come together and it's been amazing to watch it grow. Um, I know you've been involved with Waterfront Toronto from a very early stage of mm -hmm. this of the East Bay Front as a whole. And That's five six years ago. Yeah, and one of the important things for us that we've sort of identified has been a key reason why this neighborhood has been success um, has been sort of the pre-planning master plan mm -hmm. that was put in place. So Correct. it's not, it wasn't just residential, 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 residential. It was, here's where the residential will go. Here's where the retail will go. Here's a very specific retail strategy. Here's right. where the commercial will go. Here's where the, the public spaces will go. And all of these uh, pieces are coming together to create this amazing community. Right. Obviously, you've been involved with uh, Waterfront Toronto from a very early stage, and you're probably better placed than anybody to talk, sort of walk us through how that. Sure. Looks. Well, it, you know, there's a couple of things in there. First of all, Waterfront Toronto has, has a great strategic plan for mm -hmm. overall for the waterfront, and there are components that they wanted a successful development and a successful development team to adhere to. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of kudos that first and foremost goes to Waterfront Toronto. Secondly, we have an amazing development partner. Uh, an organization of the U.S. called Heinz, which is the master developer uh, for uh, this precinct, and we're their exclusive residential partner. So you're right, there was a lot of pre-planning and a lot of thought that went into what will be the picture down the road, um, and we're starting to see you know, the benefits of that uh, in, in a reasonably short period of time. Mm -hmm. So we, we did look at you know, placemaking, obviously yep. excellence in architecture, sustainability, uh, what can we do with the community, what can we do with affordable housing, all these various components that come together to make it a place where people really want to come and to yep. enjoy, whether they live here or whether they're visiting on the waterfront, uh, but to be a, a real experience and something that's appropriate for an amazing waterfront location in a great city like Toronto. So Waterfront Toronto, obviously the city of Toronto and, uh, and Heinz uh, were very much a part of the solution to what we're enjoying today. And it's amazing. I think one of the big pieces of the puzzle is retail. Mm -hmm. um, I think having that clear retail strategy, um, have it, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that every single building has to have a double height element of retail at the, at the grid. Yeah, we have, we have retail in every single building, yep. uh, various sizes. Um, they... I don't know about double height. In some circumstances, we may, but we have at least five meters right. uh, uh, for retail, which is which is more than enough mm -hmm. uh, in in, the, in a variety of different applications. So you having that retail is certainly part of the neighborhood that, that we wish to pull together here at Bayside. Yeah, and I think one of the great elements here is that you've got so many natural pieces to create amazing retail spaces. You've mm -hmm. got the the waterfront lined uh, space and the park lined space, either and on parks or on waterfront. Um, or we're back onto uh, uh, Queen's Key. So there are a number of different opportunities yeah. that will allow for a really nice blend of different types sure. of retailers. We're very keen uh, to get that started. Uh, food service is a big part of it, yeah. and uh, that'll be coming shortly. And I think it's going to have a huge impact on where this neighborhood moves forward. I mean, we've already mm -hmm. said we've come so far, but I think the next three or four years are. Right. Uh, equally as exciting. Yeah. So. Well, there's not too many locations in the city where you can have For a sure. retail experience right on the water. For sure. So we're Excellent. going to take advantage of that. Amazing. Um, transitioning now into specifically Bayside, mm -hmm. uh, which is the, the parcel of land that is developed by Tridel. It's on the southernmost tip of the, uh, the, uh, of the slip. Mm -hmm. um, so 
One of the things that struck me with Bayside is sort of the evolution of the buildings. Um, so this is now the fourth phase. Aqualuna is the fourth phase. And the first thing I sort of immediately noticed was sort of the maturity of this building in terms of suite mix, in terms of balcony sizes, in terms of uh, a number of different elements compared to where you were when you started. Mm -hmm. I think it's shown how quickly this neighborhood has grown up, yes. quote unquote. Yes. Um, uh, I wondered if you could just and become touch more desirable. More desirable, yeah. Of that that uh, product. Next. And and I think one of the the anecdotally speaking, I think when when we're dealing with luxury clients now, um, we sort of categorize them into three sort of key types of types of projects that they're looking for. And number one is Yorkville, the traditional high end neighborhood. Number two is the hotels, uh, the Shangri La, the Ritz Carlton, the Four Seasons. And then number three, and very quickly, is now the East Bayfront. So these clients are telling us they want to live down in this neighborhood, which for a neighborhood to be, you know, like we said, five or six years old, still very, very new, mm -hmm. to be competing in the same level as a Yorkville is very, very telling yes. in terms of... Yeah, so we, you know, both those areas that you've described have very different attributes. Um, there's a lot to like about being in Yorkville. But then again, there's a lot to like to being right on the waterfront. It's very special. In a very yeah. urban environment with a very short walk to the core mm -hmm. of the city. So I agree with you completely yeah. that we, we, we see that, we've experienced that. So you know, we've had a few years here on the waterfront. Lessons learned have provided us with market intelligence that told us that there is a demand for larger condominium homes. And if you can put that together with outdoor space yeah. and marry that together, um, you might have something very special. So our very first building, Aqualina, which is now completed uh, and, and occupied, uh, we did push the envelope at that time in the marketplace in terms of size. Mm -hmm. It sold successfully, but we didn't have as much outdoor space. So on the next building, uh, we, which um, launched very shortly after Lena and is now under construction, Aqua Vista, mm -hmm. uh, we tried to continue with that trend, more views towards the water, but introduce more outdoor space. We were very successful in selling that component. The third building, uh, Aqua Bella, uh, we pushed that envelope even further, yeah. tried to create larger outdoor spaces, more outdoor space, and obviously more view lines to the water. And we did quite well with that. So in each and every circumstance where we brought out new product, we increased sizes and we tried to, as much as possible, increase exposure that can be combined with uh, outdoor living space. Excellent. So that brings us to Aqualuna, Aqualuna. which we've been able to... Uh, pull all that together in a very, very special way architecturally, mm -hmm. which um, we're extremely happy with and be very proud uh, uh, to bring to the marketplace in its existing form. I think you should be. I mean, the architect team, 3XN, um, one of the top architect firms in the world based out of Denmark. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to hear how they got involved with, with the projects. I think they've done an incredible job with uh, this one and Aquabella. Yes. Well, I, I'm going to agree with you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you're right. 3XN is uh, from Copenhagen. They're based in Copenhagen. Um, they're commi they have commissions all over the world. Um, we met with them five, six years ago. We just happened to be visiting uh, in Copenhagen and on an architectural tour. And uh, there was an immediate connection with this particular group. And we had wanted to find an opportunity um, you know, where they they could do what they do best, but do it here in Toronto and right. do it on the waterfront. So with each phase in Bayside, uh, together with Heinz, we held a design competition. And um, they actually uh, participated that on the second building. But we didn't select them simply because what they brought to the marketplace, in as much as we loved it from its aesthetic uh, realm, it kind of went beyond the boundaries what the city or waterfront might right. approve in terms of where it was in terms of a park and height, etc. So they came on the third phase. Again, we invited them at another competition and they blew us away with what they had. And that's been with them ever since. So they, they won that competition for phase three and they won the fourth phase. So we're delighted uh, with that organization. Uh, they understand our needs. Uh, they, they study every nuance from an architectural perspective and other perspectives so that all elements are being uh, considered just in terms of the, the layouts, the relationship to the building, to obviously to, to uh, people, to the retail, to 
the residential components to what we're looking for, materials, you name yeah. it. Uh, so it's been a great relationship. That One way. of the areas that I, I couldn't help but notice that they did an exceptional job was view lines. Mm -hmm. um, when we're looking around the scale model, uh, you can tell how much thought's been paid, uh, how much attention has been paid to the view lines, yes. even in the, in the southern block and the northern block. Right. And it's so many units throughout the building. That was, that was part of their mandate. Uh, they did an incredible job with a number of different studies so that you know, we could maximize that. But the building also became a good neighbor. So yeah. not only do the homeowners in this particular building get great view lines, it allows for developments surrounding the building also uh, to take advantage of that too. I think it's really important to focus. Uh, it's, a, it's an Im important point because these things take so much time and energy mm -hmm. to figure they out. Do. And, and, they do. It's, and you do need that world-class architect to be able to pull that off. Well, I think, I think they accomplished that. I think so. Um, you'll notice that uh, in this uh, building, there's a lot of waves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the balconies themselves and, and other elements, architecturally, even some of the glazing components. And that all started off with a vision from the architect that just in terms of Lake Ontario and the waves that it creates. In fact, that's even the relationship with the name with Luna, which of course refers to the moon and the moon affects the water and the waves. Interesting. So it's kind of all tied in together. Very nice. Very some nice. sort of some sort of way. So that's you can see the prominent architectural uh, essence throughout that building. It's all these curves and these little waves that were Beautiful. designed into it. So an awful lot of thought went into it. Very good. Um, talk to us a little bit about the, the we mentioned sort of the maturity of the building. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us a little bit about the the suite sizes and and what to expect in that right. in the range. So the vast majority of the product that we have on offer at Aqualuna will be on the larger side. The building averages just under 1,500 square feet. Which so is in remarkable. today's standards, yeah. it's pretty big. Yeah. When uh, most of what you see downtown is less than half of that. Correct. So this, this really is geared to a different type of buyer um, with homes that have quite a large range. I mean, we have product in the 800 square foot range. Uh, we have product uh, over 4,000, 4,600 in that range. So. With a lot of yeah, outdoor space as with well. With a lot of outdoor space connected to it. So in the Aquabella building, we had a, a tremendous activity in product that was you know, between 1500 and the low 2000s. So we made sure that we were able to uh, duplicate that uh, with Aqualuna and in fact even push the boundaries a little bit in terms of size and product simply because of what you mentioned earlier. We, we get people from Yorkville making choices. Mm -hmm. This might be an alternative to that lifestyle. And we need to provide just to match up with that type of buyer. We better have the right finishes. We better have the right size. We know we've got the location. Yeah. So, and architecturally, I think we pushed the boundaries for sure. Uh, so that what we have an offering here would look amazing in any setting, but it just seems to work really well with water. With the water. You mentioned sweet finishes. Mm -hmm. What can buyers expect with, with the sweet finishes? Well, you can see some of it here. Yeah. Um, uh, the obviously great uh, choice in just about every types of finishes. I mean, we can get into product lines with Mila and whatnot, but uh, it's all aligned with what is appropriate with, with prices that, you know, in this, in this offering would be like from a million and a half to upwards of $9 million. Excellent, excellent. So I think that's, that's about wraps up all the key points that I wanted to talk about. Uh, we talked about Tridel as a company. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about the amazing redevelopment of East Bayfront and just how much more is to come over the next few years. Um, we highlighted Bayside, we talked about Aqualuna. Uh, is there anything that I didn't mention that you think is, is important well, to mention? Pretty about... thorough. We got, we <laughs> we got, got, we got, got everything checked off. Oh, I, think, I think we're there. We're good? I think overall, um, we've, we've got a pretty compelling offering. I think so too. Um, and it's only going to get better as the years go by. For sure. Great. Thank you very oh, much, Jim. It. I appreciate your time. Yeah, Thank pleasure. you very much.